few movies in the last little while have made quite as big a splash as the Netflix horror thriller Bird Box. The post-apocalyptic Sandra Bullock vehicle blew up on social media, sparking memes and conversations galore. Some fans absolutely swear that there's a ton of meaning hidden in Bird Box that are totally obvious if only we could open our eyes and look. Proceed with caution, however, because there are a ton of spoilers ahead. Let's get started with a bit of a refresher for anyone who missed some details because they watched the movie with one eye peeking through their fingers, screaming, tell me when it's over, to their friends. No, of course we're not talking about anyone in particular. So here's what we may or may not have missed. Bird Box follows Sandra Bullock's Mallory, a woman on the verge of reluctantly giving birth to her first child, who is unsure of her ability to love it enough. Suddenly, a terrifying epidemic sweeps the earth. But it's not just any old epidemic. This one is actually an unseen evil that causes whoever to look at it to lose all free will and commit suicide. So Sandra's not having a great time off the bat. After the death of her sister, which is as tragic for us as it was for her because Sarah Paulson is a national treasure, she takes shelter with a group group of survivors that include but are not limited to a grumpy John Malkovich and Trevant Rhodes, who you should absolutely remember from the third act of Moonlight. Over time, and after lots more tragedy and an extremely disturbing neck-stabbing with scissors, they learn to adapt to their environment with the use of blindfolds. Sandy gives birth to her son and winds up the guardian of another baby girl who she and Trevant raised together for five years. Eventually, it comes time to seek shelter at a mysterious sanctuary at the end of a long and perilous journey down a river. Blindfolded, remember. Devastatingly, Sandy and little boy and girl wind up having to go on without Travant. For reasons that we are not ashamed to say had us full on screaming at the TV. R.I.P. Travant. You were too good for this world. A thrilling race along the river follows, and finally, Sandy and the kids find their way to the sanctuary, which turns out to be a beautiful and secluded school for the blind. They're able to take off their blindfolds at last, and because she no longer fears for their immediate death, Sandra gives the children names names, and all's well that ends well. Oh yeah, and there was a whole thing about birds in a box, but that's beside the point. If you've even glanced at any social media since the movie was released, you know what a huge sensation this movie caused, and for good reason. Beyond just enjoying the ride, fans have come up with some pretty amazing theories about what the deeper meaning of Bird Box is. And one theory stands out more than the rest. For better or for worse, people can't stop talking about how the movie is actually an allegory for mental illness and the way that we treat it and those who suffer from it. While some have said the movie actually stigmatizes mental illness and does more harm than good, others see it as a message about how much we ignore it, because unlike physical illnesses, it's much easier to hide. Mallory actually says it pretty plainly after the death of her sister. Alone in the kitchen after the shock has worn off a little, she says that she and her sister were just driving, before Jess got a look on her face that she had never seen before. This is probably one of the most insightful observations about mental illness that the movie could make. Often, people who are struggling internally project an outside image that to the rest of us seems totally fine. They hide their pain, often to protect their loved ones from it, and a lot of the time because of the way we look down on it in society. Until very recently, and unfortunately even still today, mental illness was seen as a weakness, something that could be controlled if only the person affected could just get over it. But in Bird Box, the illness is a literal monster that is so powerful that it is impossible to just get over, which is a physical representation of what mental illness is actually like. No one would tell you to just stop worrying about that giant Lovecraftian entity that's terrorizing you and the rest of the planet, and if they did, well, we've seen how well that turns out. And then there are the ones who are immune to it, the escaped patients of a mental hospital who actually enjoy looking at the monster, and who are hellbent on forcing others to see it too. These characters have fueled the argument that Bird Box is actually doing more harm than good in the conversation about mental health. These people who the movie affectionately labeled the Psychos from Northwood. They are those who are already afflicted, and because of this, become extremely dangerous and go around murdering everyone by forcing them to look. So it's understandable why that might make some moviegoers skeptical about the message that Bird Box is trying to send. On the surface, it seems like they're making the statement that mental illness makes people deranged and unhinged, who want to inflict their torment on everyone around them. Or as the unwelcome 
British house guest put it, but what if we look at it in a slightly different way, just for a moment? Some fans have come to the defense of the movie, saying that while it's easy to interpret it the negative way, there might be more below the surface. These mentally ill survivors are unaffected by the power of the monster because every day they live with the horrors that are the worst fears of others. They are desperate for the so-called normal people to see the monster because they need them to understand what it is that they're forced to experience all the time. And yes, they absolutely go about it in the wrong way, and it is extremely violent and scary. But this is a horror movie after all, and that's what horror movies do best. Show us uncomfortable truths about one thing or another and then blow those truths totally out of proportion until they're almost unrecognizable. And all we're left with is a feeling that we can't quite describe. Another popular theory surrounding Bird Box is a little bit more direct and a lot more on the nose. Some have said the real message in the movie is about the fear of first becoming a parent, and then the weight of the responsibility that comes once you bring that baby home from the hospital and are now the caretaker of a totally dependent human life. Which is, admittedly, terrifying. It's easy to see how fans have been drawing this conclusion about Bird Box as Mallory expresses these fears from the first moment we meet her, and she doesn't stop until the last frame of the movie. She's having a baby, and boy is she not looking forward to it. She refuses to say out loud that she is in fact pregnant even while she's having an ultrasound at her doctor's office. If you watch the scene again, you'll also notice that she doesn't even glance towards the ultrasound machine to see what her baby looks like. And along with not wanting to know the gender, it's clear that Mallory is terrified and beyond resistant about the entire thing. Once we know that she winds up the sole guardian of both the little boy and girl, the allegory about parenting fears becomes even more obvious, starting with the fact that she didn't even give them names, but only calls them boy and girl. Mallory does this because the world she lives in is so dangerous that they could die at any moment, and naming them would make it so much harder to lose them. She won't even let Travant, aka Tom, tell the kids a story about climbing a tree, because she doesn't want to give them hope for the future. Even the blindfolds themselves can be seen as a metaphor about the fears of being a parent today and how tempting it can be to be overprotective and try and shield your children from everything. Just like the monsters that they can't see in the movie, there is so much danger that can't be predicted in this world. And the idea of blindfolding your children so they don't have to see it is reflected in Bird Box. Only much more literally. Mallory is the ultimate overprotective parent, because she has to be. She is what you might call a tiger mom, who is intensely strict, hard and borderline cold towards her children, all in the name of protecting them. While she is definitely in the right to be so aggressive about protecting them from the monsters, she is also preventing them from experiencing any of the good things about the world around them. Some believe that the movie is making a huge statement about that type of parenting, which is everywhere today. And that statement is that while yes, it is so important to protect your kids from harm, at some point they lose the ability to actually learn for themselves, and they end up missing out on a whole lot of good stuff as well. In the scene after the big fight with Tom, when the family is scavenging in a nearby house and come across an old box of Pop-Tarts is an example of how letting that guard down for a second might actually be a good thing for your kids. Rather than deliberately not giving them the Pop-Tarts so they don't develop false hope about more sweet things in their future, they all have this amazing moment together where they forget the terrible world they live in and just enjoy some strawberry treats together. Of course, it ends in total tragedy because, again, horror movie. And and while some might see this as a confirmation that it's better to be overprotective and never let your guard down when it comes to your children, others believe it shouldn't be taken that way at all. Yes, losing Tom was so beyond tragic that Mallory almost couldn't go on alone. But loss is as much a part of life as, well, life is. As unfair as that seems, there is literally no way to stop it from happening, and so you carry on. Later, as the trio get to the most treacherous part of the river, when Mallory thinks she has no choice but to sacrifice one of the children to look where they're going as she steers the boat, it seems pretty likely that she's going to pick girl rather than her biological son. But in the last moment, she decides against it. It's at this moment that she lets go of the idea that she can shield them from everything by always making the logical, calculated decision. Rather than sacrificing the girl who isn't actually her blood, she takes a leap. Later in the forest, after having been separated from girl by the monster, Boy says that the reason girl won't come to her is because she's scared of Mallory. It's only when she breaks down and 
and apologizes to Girl for being so hard on her and tells her the end of Tom's story that Girl finds her way back to Mallory. Just like with parenting, even in a world not dominated by giant unseen monsters, sometimes the only way to bring your children back to you is to trust them enough to do it themselves. Finally, by the time that Mallory and the kids make it to the sanctuary, she's able to give them names, let them go and play, and trust that they will be okay. Of course, it's because they're now hidden from the mind-eating demons or whatever they are, but still, for the metaphor, it totally works. Of course, like any movie, there can be more than one hidden meaning, and for Bird Box, there are many, but these two seem to fit more than others. So what did you think of these theories? Do you believe them at all, or think everyone is putting just a little too much thought into all this? Do you have another Bird Box theory that we should know about? Let us know in the comments, and we hope you enjoyed the ride.